Welcome to this course on demographic concepts and methods. I'm Alan Marshall, I'm Director of um, Edinburgh Research Training Centre, a new initiative within the School of Social and Political Science, bringing together the expertise in uh, social science methods across the school. So this course comprises four lectures and is introductory in nature. So aimed at people without demographic training or those that require a refresher. And a key additional aim of this course is to set up the pop group training videos and exercises that follow and build on the material that's presented uh, here. So the course is centered around basic demographic concepts, measures and the data sources we need to capture these measures and the components of change within Scottish council areas. So we'll be using real data in the exercises that follow the uh, slides that I'll be presenting here, often prepared in advance, but all the sources for the data will be provided too. And the final point of the course is to lead up to producing a population projection using the cohort component methodology, which is what POP Group uses. So we lead to a good end point from which POP Group then takes, uh, takes things forwards. And the later materials around POP Group will include both an introduction to the POP Group demographic software, but also showing how to use POP Group to do something quite innovative in terms of demographic projections, um, creating a, a set of sub-council area projections for areas across Scotland. So the course today is, or that is structured around the demographic equation, which is core to the cohort component methodology. And what this is essentially telling us is that if we're interested in the population at time t plus one, we can derive an estimate of that based on our base population at time t, to which we age on, adding on births, taking away deaths, adding on in, in migrants and taking away out migrants. So it's often known as a basic demographic equation, balancing equation. So the structure of the materials um, that I'll be producing today comprises four videos after this introductory video. So first of all, we'll be looking at measuring fertility or births, then mortality or deaths, then migration, finishing off with producing a population projection using the cohort component methodology. And each of these videos are accompanied by a practical exercise using Excel. So why should we be interested in demographic change? And I guess the key reason is that demographic change is the heart of many big policy issues at various scales, globally, nationally and locally. So if we think about issues like population ageing, many concerns around population ageing um, at each of these different uh, scales. But crucially, population structure and demographic events directly influence our current and future needs across a range of policy areas. So if we think about housing requirements, education, resources in the future, social security and health, each of these um, policy areas depend upon not just the population size, but also the population age structure. So an ageing population are likely to have different housing needs compared to uh, a more youthful population structure. So the scientific structure of a uh, scientific study of population structure and events, which is what demographers do, is crucial to help policymakers and planners to quantify need for these kinds of um, services and um, resources. So we can predict future developments in need and we can provide essential information for allocation of resources. So how many houses to build and where we should be building them. If we think about the policy context, planners will need to know how many school places are needed for children in a particular area, and that relies on demand each year, so the size of the new intake of five-year-olds. And we might expect that demand to vary for a number of reasons. It might vary because of changes in the numbers of children that women are having over time. It might change depending on the size of the cohort at childbearing um, ages. But crucially, we often need advanced warning of changes in demand in order to plan for things like teacher training, 
school building or closure of schools in the context of declining um, child populations. We need these projections of school places in five or ten years time and that requires us to produce a population projection and this is a difficult thing to do because it requires us to make assumptions about future demographic behaviour. A crucial tool we can use to make predictions about the future is the demographic future is the age and sex structure of a population. So if we know the age and sex structure of a population, we can infer from that a direct influence that this age and sex structure has on components of population change. And by that I mean fertility or births, mortality and migration. And the reason for this is that all of these demographic events are strongly linked to age. So we know that the risk of dying is highest at the oldest ages, that the propensity to give birth tends to be uh, greatest at particular ages between, say, 25 and um, 35. And we know that migration, too, may follow strong age patterns, perhaps linked to people's life course, moves around starting work, or moving to study and so on. So this graph shows the risk of mortality by age and sex in the UK, and we can see very low levels of mortality. So our rates of deaths per thousand very low between the ages of 0 to around the ages of 59 or 60. And then we see a strong increase in mortality um, above the age of 50. And we can see here higher levels of mortality for males than for females too. So important to stratify not just by age, but also by gender in this particular case. And we can also see um, age patterns to fertility. So this is the age pattern of fertility in England and Wales in 2006. And we can see a peak in fertility rates um, between the ages of 25 and 35 of around 100 births per thousand women. So age structure is key to experience of many um, demographic uh, events, fertility, mortality and migration. And we can use this information to predict the future in terms of how numbers of births, deaths and migration might change over time. 